and then you can get started. Okay, I'm ready to start. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, just started the uh, recording, so give it a few and then you can go ahead. Around there's somebody talking outside. <laughs> no problem. Hello, and welcome to my webinar on anatomy of a nucleic acid sample preparation. My name is Katherine Meckling, and I'm a technology development molecular workflow scientist for Millipore Sigma. Millipore Sigma is the life science business of Merck KGAA, Darmstadt, Germany, and operates as Millipore Sigma in the U.S. and Canada. Today's webinar, I will outline sample preparation through a short introduction before discussing common methods used by scientists. I'll be highlighting workflows for genomic DNA isolation. Finally, I'm excited to introduce you to a new technology coming soon from Millipore Sigma called Genome E Single Spin Technology. Anatomy is a study of the structure or internal workings of something. After sample collection, there are five key workflow decisions a scientist makes in regards to their sample preparation. The first step is homogenization of the sample. Mechanical disruption by using a pestle or bee beating is often used for tough samples, such as animal or plant tissues. However, samples like cells or blood can be pelleted before lysis. The next step is breaking open the sample and digesting any unwanted biomolecules through that lysis step. For nucleic acid sample preparations, typically a lysis buffer is added that will assist with breaking into the cells. Proteases, like the ubiquitous proteinase K, are used to digest the proteins that can degrade the nucleic acid. Optionally, if assessing for DNA, sometimes an incubation of RNAs is performed, or if RNAs, RNA is assessed, a DNA is used. Purification is the choice of method for separating and isolating the biomolecule of interest. There are several ways of performing this process, and I will dive into some of the more common workflows later in this presentation. Modification is the process of making changes to the nucleic acid that allows for the final step, which is assessment. There are now methods where scientists will amplify their nucleic acid by PCR directly after lysis. However, for unbiased assessment of results from a, pur a purification step is still required. Most scientists group lysis and purification together for sample preparation, as many off-the-shelf products exist to address these needs. However, before I go deeper into the different methods of purification, it is important to think about some of the key pain points about sample preparation that can impact downstream sample modification and assessment. The two key drivers for downstream failure is poor quality and poor yield. This is due to um, inherent variability within individual samples as well as variability across the different sample types. Typically, optimization is required from the end user in order to validate for their sample type. Additionally, incomplete lysis can be a driver to help reduce, to not help, but to cause those reduced yields. Nucleic acids degrade over time, and that could potentially lead to reduced fragment length and also impact those overall yields. Additionally, you want to be careful of those carryover process contaminants from sample preparation such as binding salts and organic solvents that can have detrimental impacts on downstream processes. And it is important to be mindful of these factors. One of the oldest techniques still used by scientists today for nucleic acid purification is phase separation and cleanup. This is commonly called uh, phenylchloroform isolation. The nucleic acids separate due to preferences of a hydrophilic environment of the aqueous phase compared to that of the organic solvent. Guanidium thiocyanate, a chaotropic agent, is added to the organic phase to aid in the denaturation of proteins, such as those that strongly bind nucleic acids or those that degrade RNA. Under acidic conditions, 
such as between pHs 4 and 6. Um, DNA partitions into the organic phase, while RNA remains in the aqueous phase. Under neutral conditions, such as those between 7 and 8, both DNA and RNA will partition into the aqueous phase. That aqueous phase is then collected and followed by a ethanol or isopropanol precipitation to clean up the organic solvents used to isolate the nucleic acids from the sample lysate. These organic solvents can also have downstream impact the downstream applications, and it's kind of strange to use organic solvents to clean up organic solvents. The nucleic acid is finally crashed in a pellet using a salt and washed multiple times with organic solvents, the ethanol or isopropanol, before respending in a storage buffer. One of the most common methods for nucleic acid isolation is using silica spin columns. This is widely used out of convenience where commercially available kits can be performed safely without a fume hood. The silica membrane is positively charged and therefore easily binds the negatively charged nucleic acids. Again, chaotropic salts assist with denaturing of the proteins from the nucleic acid and also assist in the binding steps to the membrane before the sample is washed with an ethanol solution and eluted in a final storage buffer. And so began the age of bind wash elute. Another common method is using magnetic, magnetic beads. These sim are very similar to the silica columns and silica magnetic beads are positively charged and therefore, again, easily bind those negatively charged nucleic acids. Again, chaotropic salts are used to assist in denaturing the proteins from the nucleic acid and assist in the bead binding steps before the sample is washed with an ethanol solution and finally eluded in a storage buffer. This process is widely adopted due to its ease to be automated over silica spin columns, thus making it popular with high throughput labs. I hope by now you've noticed a pattern where if it is either phase separation and cleanup, silica ma magnetic beads, or silica spin columns, the process can be tedious with binding and washing of the nucleic acid. Tube handling can be prone to human error, and these methods typically run the risk of cross-contamination. Yet, what if those bind and wash steps could be eliminated from the workflow? And now I get to introduce you to the General E single spin technology where the nucleic acid is purified in a single spin. This is eliminating all of the bind and wash steps, resulting in reduced tube handling and a safer and more efficient way of handling your sample. You may be thinking, you cannot just eliminate the bind and wash steps. However, by using a negative chromatography method, it is possible. Instead of binding the nucleic acid and running the risk of insufficient binding or nonspecific binding of your sample, negative chromatography uses size exclusion to fractionate the components of the sample by size. This eliminates process biases associated with binding nucleic acids to a membrane or to a bead. Larger biomolecules, like nucleic acid, flow more readily through a resin bed while smaller contaminants are absorbed and retained by differing migration speeds through the resin beads and take a longer time to make it through. As you can see through this graphic, the nucleic acids bypass the beads while the sample contaminants are um, small enough to fit within the beads and are absorbed, thus taking a scenic route. Clearing the sample and packing the resin before loading the superdatum prevents cellular debris from eluding in the final sample. These workflows changes provide three key advantages over silica. Simplified workflow, superior performance, and reduced waste due to eliminating a lot of the tube handling steps. And of course, no more chaotropic salts or ethanol. Insufficient lysis can be a setup for failure from the start. That's why we took a more targeted approach with General E Smart Lyse Protease Mixes. These reagents were chosen for two specific reasons. One, their efficiency to work in a non chaotropic environment, and two, th their optimization for their sample type. For example, animal tissues and bacterial cell culture samples require totally different lysis strains. 
using a sample-specific approach helps cut down on incubation times, and no kaotrophs in the lysis buffer means no kaotrophs in the final sample. Additionally, preparing the spin column for purification can be performed simultaneously to the step for even more workflow time savings. But let's take a closer look at the column itself. Preparing the column for use is a simple process. A separate collection tube is used to collect the void volume from the column and can be reused since it actually never touches the sample. Additionally, the caps should be loosened a quarter of a turn or a cap punching tool can be used to prevent a, prevent a vacuum from forming within the column. The uh, beyond that, you need to snap off the bottom closure so the sample has a place to go. Um, additionally, you need to resuspend the bead matrix by a simple vortex step um, so that they are resuspended and that they pack more evenly during the column preparation step. And after spinning the column, the column um, buffer is removed and a slant may or may not be observed due to that levelly centrifugation step. Now you can choose your own workflow. You can simply load your sample directly into the column without opening the purification column. Just use the General E single spin cap puncher device. This helps reduce cross-contamination by keeping the sample contained between transfer steps. While this tool is meant to work specifically with General E purification columns, it is not required for purification. All you have to do is load your sample directly onto the resin bead after unscrewing the cap. Just remember to keep the cap loosened a quarter turn if no hole is punched in the cap. One spin and you're done, and now you have a General E purified nucleic acid. Remember those pesky organic solvents and chaotropic salts from previous um, nucleic acid workflows? Shown here is an example of spectrophotometric data comparison between silica-based protocols and the General E single spin workflow. In purple is the sample purified by the different methods. In blue or teal is the purification without the sample being added. In red is the sample without any process contaminants. And in yellow is the back, background or the blank for this analysis. As you can see in this example, the process contaminants can be observed from the silica method in the OD230 range. Spinning the sample only once has other advantages as well. High molecular weight genomic DNA is critical for certain downstream applications, such as next generation sequencing or electron microscopy. Silica-based purification methods rely on multiple spins that can shear the nucleic acid. Shown here is four replicate samples purified either using a silica column or a Genlu E column. As you can see, there's more full-length product on the electrophoresis gel for the General Lu E purified nucleic acid. Additionally, these smaller fragments that could potentially be due to shearing of the nucleic acids are often included in yield calculations and can give a false sense of how much template is being used in downstream workflows. Without adding process contaminants to the sample purification, downstream modifications and assessments are more reliable. And it makes sense. Polymerases and restriction enzymes have preferred buffers and salts and do not like organic solvents. These factors can impact the thermodynamics of a reaction. Shown here is an example of a qPCR of mouse kidney tissue assessing for a housekeeping gene from genomic DNA isolated by the two methods, silica or general E single spin. The silica isolated genomic DNA has a higher CT value, indicating either there's inhibition in the reaction or there's inaccurate quantitation of the template being added to the reaction. The E in Genlu E highlights several eco-friendly improvements. The first, of course, is that there's no more um, hazardous liquid waste, and this is done by eliminating the binding and wash steps that have those ethanol and chaotropic salts. Additionally, we rethought about the packaging, um, so this has sustainable packaging in mind, where the box in the insert is made of 70% recyclable content. Additionally, this is the first product to have compostable 
materials used for packaging, and that's what all of our columns in, are packaged in. Plus, since it's a simplified workflow and there's fewer steps, there's um, a higher sa um, savings in energy costs. And you can actually measure the waste prevention um, on how much plastic between the two workflows, where if I take all of the pipette tips, all the tubes used in the workflow to isolate, as well as the column, uh, the weight of the column itself, if I take the measurements of uh, purifying one sample compared to purifying the other, there's a 55% reduction in plastic weight that is commonly um, cost users for uh, disposal. And here are they. Finally, there's these key applications that we are targeting with the initial launch of this product. Um, it's being targeted uh, initially for genomic DNA um, from sample types such as whole blood, cell culture, um, animal tissue, and plant tissue. Um, we have supporting products as well, the cap puncher, some FFPE deparagonation solution, which is also a safer solution since um, it's commonly used for xylene, which is very unsafe. Um, so this is not a xylene um, deparagonation solution, so it's a lot safer to use. Um, we also have a tissue stabilizer and an RNA gel loading buffer. Plus, you can, if you're not um, isolating directly from a lysate, if you're just trying to purify or deplete an impurity from your sample, we also have these cleanup um, kits that are also available. And you can use our handy-dandy uh, selection tool here in order to choose for your cleanup type. Um, we have only just begun, but we already have several products for you to try. These products will be available very soon in just a couple weeks, so I really hope you get a chance to check them out. Thank you again. I hope you enjoy this presentation, and I look forward to your questions. Okay, awesome job. Uh, well, we are all set pretty much from here. I'll just do some quick editing on the front and back end since there is no interruptions during your presentation, and then we'll have it ready for the event next week. Okay, thank you so much. Of course. Any questions for me before we wrap up? Nope, that was it. Thank you. Awesome. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.